When Harry's heroes demolished Premiership pace-headers Newcastle United, it was a culmination of a brilliant run of form by the Hammers, aided by the capture of a band of international players. Five wins out of five confirmed that Harry Redknapp had built a star-studded squad to be proud of. And this exclusive programme pays tribute to the New Look Hammers. Homegrown talent Danny Williamson outshone the multi-million pound stars from Newcastle, confirming his outstanding potential. Danny's namesake is a new Hammers pinup, a Portuguese superstar with brains as well as beauty. He certainly made good use of his head against Spurs. Dix for England is a new chant at Upton Park. Julian's brilliant form has been the best of his career. And the Hammers have finally found a defensive kingpin to fill the boots of long-serving Alvin Martin. Slavan Bilic from Croatia. The drama begins with a five-goal thriller against Coventry City. Well, this is a good run here, might try a shot, and Potsy at 150 to 1 to score. Goal number two loomed there for a moment, and it could have been Hull City all over again. Bishop, Cote, can he get in the stride on this one? Took it wide, unfortunately, may let Hughes come in. Has done. Hughes is wide, brings Dix into the action. Dix first down to Cote, turns well, brilliant oh! oh, didn't he do brilliantly, and he certainly deserved a goal for that. A piece of magic from Tony Cotty. The ball came in it first time from Dix. That was the turn that did it under the left foot. Agrizovic scrambling and it just hit a divot and went wide. Hughes. Burrows clearance. It's not a good one. So Grisovic marking out his territory. Dowie. Corner. Another offshore incident. Dowie's asking for the ball to be hit around the centre spot. That's where he's going to time his run. Up he goes. Grisovic has dropped it. Cottage missed it, Reaper, it's there, it's there, and Mark Reaper scores yet another vital goal. The last time he scored was against Blackburn, and now he's done it again, a crucial goal just when West Ham need it. Grizovic dropped it, Cotty completely miscued, and Reaper ran in and lashed it with his right foot. Dix, a terrific run from him, but uh, Telfer won it. Moncur, Williamson, Brown. This is better from West Ham, good approach play. Brown is looking for either Moncur or Dowie. It's gone through to Williamson, he let it run for the corner. Suddenly a revitalised West Ham so far this half. The ten minutes since they've been out. And there's the man whose goal divides the sides, Mark Reaper. His first goal of the season. His corners, so important really for West Ham. Hit it in first time and again. Up goes Reaper for number two, in the post! It looked for everything in the world that it was number two for Mark Reaper, a lovely little delicate chip from Hughes, he went up, he did everything right, and 
And Grizovic just had to watch, and off the post it came. Nice touch there from Hall. The tackle, Moncur. Didn't stop the move though. Borrows a fantastic ball to Salako. 30 yards there, right footed, and uh, Glasgow held it well. But what a, what a sensational ball, really, from Burrows to John Salako. Almost a third the length of the pitch, dropped at his feet. Burrows again. Good jump from Brown. Williams looked like a handball. The referee plays on, and Telfer's gone up, Dublin's gone up. But uh, in the end, a fairly feeble shot. Frank calling across to Ian Dowie. One can only speculate as to what pearl of wisdom he threw his way. Dowie hung in the air for about three seconds there, but got nowhere near the ball at all. Bishop, here's one for Cody to chase. Grizovic has come out a long way. Cody must make it. Tony Cody. Well, his first goal since the 23rd of December. Here in the Premiership. It was a lovely through ball, and he hasn't got the legs he used to. He used to have, but um, Grizovic had come a long way off his line, and despite the attentions of Shaw, Cotty finished brilliantly. to be too clever, Richardson. Marvellous tackle from Dix. He took the ball off Whelan absolutely brilliantly. And uh, a mark of the new improved Julian Dix, no animosity at all, even though he was thumped down quite heavily there by Whelan. Just took his hand, sportingly stood up, no arguments, no debate, and it just makes the uh, words of David Mellor so ridiculous, saying that Dix is an animal, that's just absurd. Williams took it off Bishop. Telford, can he hit a cross in? It's a delicate flick, and it's in, bundled in at the far post. Dion Dublin, Coventry are back in it. Telfer got the cross in, and it was the flick from Whelan that set it up for Dublin. Very important for Coventry that they get straight back in. Hughes. He's got no one supporting him, uh, Dix is now. Oh, Hughes has done well there. Moncur got loads and loads of space. On the left foot. It's a lovely chip. Oh! Sora Grizovic off his line, did John Moncur. Well, it's a great moment for a young man. It's two number 26s, and you will not find an older and a younger person. Gordon Strachan's coming on, and this is Frank Lampard. He certainly got the Frank Lampard eyes and the nose. I'm sure Frank won't mind me saying it's a little straighter. First challenge, he wins. What a lovely moment there. And here's his opposite number, Gordon Strachan. Harry Redknapp putting his arm round both the men. 
Sally Big Run will be hoping that uh, Gordon can uh, make a difference to his side in the last uh, eight minutes. That's not a good clearance from Dix. Pickering's done very well here. It's a dangerous moment. It's in. It's a brilliant goal. And it's Noel Whelan. Coventry have come back from the dead. It was superb approach work, really, from Pickering. And look at this finish from Whelan. Frank Lampard uh, trying to get into some space, and now he's decided he quite got the courage to come forward and uh, make himself available. Must be terribly nervous, Williamson. Through! Derry! Yes! It was all it needed, and it was this touch from Williamson that fed Dowie, and Shaw, although he got a touch, he couldn't do anything about it. And Ian Dowie puts West Ham back into the lead. It was a great result for us, very important. Um, we needed to beat them today. Uh, two goals up, you know, we looked like we was coasting, but we made it hard for ourselves and in the end it was a you know just welcome win really. It's been looking like you're you're not going to be scoring at Upton Park lately. What with that fantastic game the South End keeper had, and then when you hit the underside of the bar against Manchester United, did you think it was just going to be one of those some months already? Um yeah, I mean you have spells like that. I mean to be honest, the goals have been few and far between for me right through that throughout the season, but you know, I you know, I firmly believe in myself. Um, you know, I've been scoring goals for 13 years. There's only two goal, uh, two players who have scored more goals than me in the Premier League. So, you know, my record speaks for itself. And you don't become a bad player overnight. You don't not become a finisher overnight. So, you just keep believing, and you know the goals will come eventually. I thought, you know, at two 0 we were going to go on and win the game quite comfortably. We had, you know, great share of the possession. Really, you know, stringing passes again, and looking very good. But to be fair to them, they got a goal against the runner play, and then they were right back in it. We had a little dodgy spell where they equalised, but it shows something about the spirit of the side that we can come out there and win the game 3-2. And yeah, it was nice to get an important goal, but today it was an all-round team effort. I thought the lads were fantastic. When did you know you were going to be on the subs bench? Um, I was I was in the squad just and I thought there was a chance, but Harry came up to me and whispered in my ear as I was sitting in the change room about an hour and a half before the game, said you're going to be sub, and I couldn't really believe it. I was sitting there like shaking for about half an hour, but it was it was nice. Has your dad said anything to you yet? Um, I just had a quick word with him, he just said well done and that, he said, you know, we'll have a chat, he'll tell me what I've done wrong when I come on and that when I get home I'll default, you know. 48 hours later, the Hammers welcomed two new faces. Ily Dimitrescu, the Romanian World Cup star from Spurs, about to face a long battle for a work permit. And the club's new golden boy, Portuguese teenager Danny, signed on loan from Sporting Lisbon until the end of the season. Danny's film star looks captured the attention of the tabloid press. Lock up your daughters, the headline in this national newspaper. But it was all taken in good humour. The lads, they're good little lads here, and yeah. I think they'll all, uh, they'll all like him. And Ian Dowie said that uh, he feels that uh, first time he saw Danny, he said that uh, Ian Dowie said he looks very much like him. So, <laughs> and uh, Les Seeley said he's definitely not going to bring his wife to any more games. <laughs> having seen him, so. <laughs> but no, the lads, they'll get on well with him. They're good little lads here, yeah. and uh, he's got ability, and I think he'll take to that. It didn't take Danny long to fit in with his new teammates, and he soon looked at home on the training pitch. Only 19 years old, here was a player with genuine flair, the image to match, and already a popular figure with his fellow players. Obviously, you get stick. Um, let's see, you get stick. But um, <laughs> no, he's all right. You get used to it. There's a lot of Mickey taken at this club. Shut up! But, um, <laughs> no, you get used to it. He looks a talented boy, and I think yeah. in the end of the day, that's what uh, Harry's bought. He's 19 year old, enormous potential, and uh, we'll have a good three months to have a look at him. And uh, if he proves, it'd be a great signing for the club. And at 19, he can go on and cheat. <laughs> you were saying? Have you ever been hit by a bulldog before? <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, he's not normally as gentle as that. No, the famous Julian Dix, yeah. Famous Julian Dix, yeah. But, um, you know, obviously, he's got a tremendous amount of potential. I've seen him play briefly against England. 
he didn't play. We, we drew with Portugal, Northern Ireland drew them one on. I didn't see him out there. But uh, obviously we bought something for the future, and I think he's enjoying the, enjoyed the atmosphere, and the fans will take to his take to him because they like flair players, and yeah. he'll be looking to get for his first taste, and that looks like it might be tomorrow. So, well, Danny, welcome to Chile, Chadwell Heath. It's not quite uh, the warmth and training that you've been used to. I wouldn't say. Do you find it very cold here? Yeah, very. <laughs> I, I wasn't used to it. It's kind of a cold, but. Um, with time, I think I'll get used to it. What do you make of the West Ham setup and uh, all the lads? You haven't hadn't had much time to chat and meet them yet, but what do you make of it so far? Uh, I have to, to ask you something. Speak, uh, sure. What do you think of the the setup here at West Ham? The people, the players. I have uh, the players. The players are great. Uh, they play well. They are good friends. Uh, we have a, I think, a good team with. Uh, the coach is very well. All the people here have been treating me well. I think uh, that is going to be great to my adaptation here. And you're in the squad for tomorrow, hoping to play, obviously. Yeah, I'm here to play. I came to play. And, uh, if the coach thinks that I'm ready to go, so I am too. What, what sort of impact do you hope to make on the on British football? Uh, first, I, I want to, to get on the team and to help the team to, to do something. And that's, that's the, the things that I want to do. I don't want to, to cause any impact or anything. Now, if you've seen the papers this morning, they're all quite uh, uh, strong in the line that daughters have to be locked up. They call you the Portuguese playboy and all this sort of thing. What do you make of all that? No, if I, if I was a playboy, I wouldn't come here to, to play football. I would go to models or something. I'm here to play football. That's what I want to do. Well, Harry, um, as we were just saying, you look at him, he doesn't look like an English footballer, does he? Do you think he's going to be able to adapt to it? What do the lads think of him? Well, I'd have been very impressed. He's a good footballer. I mean, you know, it does not need to to Ryan Giggs or anybody else to me. I mean, uh, he's, he's an outstanding young player. As I said earlier, you only got to ask the England the 21 side that went out and got knocked out of the European uh, Championship this year in, in Portugal. Um, he absolutely destroyed us, I think, in that game, got the goals that knocked England out, and we had an outstanding team of young players who were all regulars yeah, in the Premier League. About, so and this kid was the outstanding player on the field, so he's got real talent. That was evident in training, even in that short training session, wasn't it? I mean, he was a bit quiet, obviously, he doesn't yeah. know everybody yet, but no. yeah, when he got the ball, you could see that oh, he had yeah. it. He's got, he's got a, a magic left foot, and it's going to take him time. It's no, uh, it's no sort of, I'm not in a desperate situation to throw him in and expect miracles from him. We've got him on loan to the end of the season, and we'll take it from there. And if he impresses, and uh, I've got to look at him as a 19-year-old kid, which he is. He's, he's a year out of youth team football, so, um, you know, I'm not expecting him to come and set the Premier League like straight away. It'll take a little bit of time for him. Dimitrescu's arrival had been more low-key, but no one expected the frustration to follow. The renewal of his work permit had been taken for granted. Rejection meant Illy's playing career was put on hold. Danny, meanwhile, was free to start on the bench at home to Nottingham Forest. An Aussie-born Robbie Slater was back in midfield. Dowie quite up with the play. And here's uh, an opportunity, Campbell chasing Potts. He's in on him! Oh! Some very casual, lazy defensiveness from uh, Steve Potts, but brilliantly followed up by Kevin Campbell. Goodness me, I don't know what Steve Potts was thinking of here, but uh, all credit to Campbell for persisting there. Goodness me, Costco uh, and West Ham, very fortunate. Five minutes gone, and that could have been the first goal. Colin Cooper, but uh, Crossley, slightly wild uh, clearance. Not that he had much choice, to be fair. Brown gets it back from uh, Ian Bishop. Slater. Chris Bart Williams and uh, tidying it up. Williamson challenged by Gemmel. Can Bart Williams take this one for Forrest. Oh, Williamson takes it off him. Bishop. It's a long ball for Dowie to chase. Well cut out in the end by Colin Cooper. Won. Good looking ball to Phillips. This, of course, is where Forrest is so dangerous, building from the midfield. 
Des Little. One. Has it back and uh, just broke down at the final step there. Scott Gemmell very much involved in that move, but uh, got a little bit tight. Good chest out of defence again by Cooper. As Cooper doesn't need any uh, introduction to London fans. Uh, Bay for Mill, from whom he was uh, signed, which club was signed in 1993. Cooper. Dix has done well. Kenny Brown. Now he turns. That's a bit wild. Hughes uh, does well. Took it past Salenzi, but uh, he's got the throw. Julian Dix has a little bit of space for him. There's Bishop calling for it. Slater is wide. Williamson is calling. Put it, flicks it back to Bishop. And out wide to Slater, but it's a four ball. And here's a chance for Roy to create something down this uh, left flank. That's an excellent ball. Salenzi. Dix fell over, and uh, so did Salenzi, but uh, referee Bird said no foul. But him someone will uh, take this, takes it off Gamble. He's got a run on goal, it's four against three if he can get the cross in. May not need it. Good save, Mark Crossley. Went down low to his right. Marvellous save by the uh, England under-21 boy. Made his debut in uh, 1988. Let's have another look at that one again. Yes, the... Uh, well, what do you think? Certainly, Talenzi went down. Williamson. Certainly been uh, at the centre of the midfield a lot more in the last few weeks than he did earlier in the season. Although he did score West Ham's first Premiership goal. In fact, it may well have been the first Premiership goal of the season. I think he scored after five minutes in the first game against Leeds United. Of course, that was before a certain Mr Yeboa struck twice. And we heard a lot about him. Slater. Bishop. That's Hughes wide. Uh, Goes for the short ball to Williamson. It's inside. It could come through to Slater onto the left foot. And Forrester kicking themselves. He got through. Robbie Slater, it's his second goal of the season. And somehow the ball squeezed through to him when it looked as though Forrest had closed West Ham down. Williamson it was who started the move with a through ball. And it was a flick on it was an error unfortunately and certainly cooper won't be pleased when he looks at that one again robbie slater west ham united one nottingham forest now dave phillips is wide lovely take control and run from roy his acceleration is terrific he's round reaper just needs a ball inside to Wone. This one comes back to Phillips. Wone is with him. Phillips hits it deep. Salenzi jumps up. Right across the goal, but no Forest man to pick it up. Lovely control from Roy again. Good chasing back from Slater. Quite clearly a Forest corner, despite his protestations. Tosco calling his uh, defence to order. As far as pile on the pressure again. Gemmell's corner comes across. Salenti it was who uh, got to it in the end, but uh, Williamson again at the heart of the West Ham defence. That's a fabulous ball to Cotte. Williamson is running, streaking down the pitch for the return. Can Cotte find him, maybe? Oh, instead, he hits it out to Dowie. Hughes, it's a good break from West Ham. This one will come to Dowie, chests it down, onto his right foot! Lovely save, Crossley did well.
lot of critics have said Crossley really deserved an England cap. And some more of that international form here. Now he's shot and Crossley saved very well. And we are now into injury time. At the end of an enjoyable first half, in which Forrest have certainly had their share of the play. Unable to breach the West Ham defence yet. Well, in the end, Cotty was uh, bundled over by Colin Cooper. West Ham begin the half the way they uh, end the half, I should say, the way they started it on the attack. But in between, uh, Forrest have had plenty of the play. Nothing yet to show. Dowie, good head, but uh, only found one. Salenzi, uh, suicidal, back pass. Bishop! <laughs> Ian Bishop almost made uh, Salenzi play for that uh, rather careless header back into play. And you see his mind work there. A lot of swerve on that, but Crossley knew what he was doing. Now the West Ham bench. It's gone all the way through almost. It's come through to Slater again. Here's Cotty. Brilliant from Crossley. Absolutely point blank. Cotty cannot believe it. And what a fabulous save from Crossley. That uh, certainly keeping Forrest in the game. It was a great header from Slater. If anything, Cotty a bit close to Crossley, but take nothing away from it. It was a brilliant save. Corner comes over, and it's come across from Dowie. Crossley, just watching that one. Dowie timed his run well and met the ball cleanly, but in the end, unfortunately for West Ham, he steered it wide. It's virtually a free header there, although there we are, we had the man on the line. So even if it had been on target, it may well not have gone in. Williamson. Hughes had such a good match so far. Dix, he's trodden on it. It's a good interception, a little watching all the way. This is Campbell. Won. He tries something from here. Reaper put the block in. Slater hits the control. Crossfield, he did well. He's found Hughes. Dix has joined the attack. Bishop is weighing back. That didn't run kindly for Dix, but he still found Hughes. Little chip into Cotty if he can turn. Dix! Six goals this season. Looking for number seven. Main hitter of the ball. I have to, have to explain to you if you're wondering why of 20 seconds or so after every uh, moment of action there's a sort of ooh from the crowd. That's because we're having the replays on the large screens and disconcerting when you can see nothing on the pitch that merits an ooh. Well, that explains, I hope, what that's all about. Bishop got the better of Roy there. A bit of good fortune. Slater. Williamson has done well. That's a fabulous ball. Cotty's on it. He's wide. Crossley did extremely well. Can't say the same for his defence, he didn't let him hang on to it. Slater. It'd be great if we can have another look at that. That really was a, a, a fabulous save from Crossley. Cotty got himself into a good position on the right-hand side, as he likes to do. One of his favourite positions, that. And he hit it beautifully. Crossley charged it down. Hughes. He's really asking a lot of Slater, but Slater does it. Put that well. Cuts through onto the left foot. Blocked this time by Harland. Hughes is there. He's got Brown behind him. And he's done really well. Up goes Dowie. Might come to Bishop. Super strike. Ian Bishop. Only two goals this season. 
And one of those was in the cup. But he scored here against Forrest at the end of 94. The last time uh, the two sides met at Upton Park. Roy. I think everybody saw that. Well, he looks a little bit sorry for himself, and well, he might, Brian Roy, uh, he hasn't had any luck at all today. Even down to the uh, linesman sneaking on him to get him booked. Forrest must have one eye on Europe at the moment, but of course they need to protect their interests if uh, they're not going to win the UEFA Cup this year, they want to be in Europe next year, and that's uh, a league placing, a high league placing is important. Well, they're fifth at the moment, Tottenham Hotspur just above them. They're certainly within reach of Manchester United and Liverpool. And only massive slips by Newcastle is going to stop them winning. Championship looks pretty much there. Oh, that was a terrible header back. Crossley, thankfully for Forrest, was quickly onto it. It looked for a moment like uh, Chettle may have made a bit of a boo-boo. And I can tell you that with... Um, not very long to go. Just eight minutes. Daniel de la Cruz Cavallo is preparing to come on for West Ham. Very exciting moment for the young man as well as, of course, for the West Ham fans. Never had anyone of his like here. Tony Cotti comes off and Daniel de la Cruz Cavallo, known as Danny from Portugal, comes on. Just 19 years of age and a sporting handshake from Cotti. And one wonders to what extent one might have seen the end of an era there. This young man, so much skill, so much talent, to what extent he may become the next big West Ham striker, at least big in terms of goals, not necessarily height. We shall see. Well, he has less than eight minutes today. And it looked like high kicking there on uh, Slater. Danny set certainly has the film star looks. Whether he's got the film star finish, we shall see. Has to be deep now. Now in injury time, it's Forrest Mount another attack. This may be their last chance, Phillips. Good header, Williamson, good defensive header. Danny, it's done well. Bishop lets him run. He, he went for glory. He's trying to explain with uh, a bit of the old sign language. Who could blame him? I think he'll get a cane in if Forrest score now. Further good news for the Hammers came off the field. The wait for Slavan Bilic's work permit was over and the Croatian was ready for action. Did you know anything about West Ham before you came here? Did, did you hear about West Ham over there? Yeah, my father, he, uh, he is a big fan from English football and he told me maybe, maybe about 10 years ago that West Ham was a really big, big club before. And, and I have heard about West Ham a lot, a lot in Croatia and in Germany as well. Bilic made his debut at White Hart Lane, where the stage was also set for Danny to make his first full appearance. And what an impact the Portuguese wonder kid made, a hero inside the first five minutes. He disputes that. The referee has uh, called him over to talk about those actions. Yeah, so you see Dali in a tussle with Calderwood. I don't see too much wrong with that, but uh, I think in the opening few minutes we've seen two free kicks and the indications were quite, quite clear. When Spurs had the free kick, Calderwood and Mabbott were immediately sent forward. 
But it was interesting that West Ham elected to, to keep Bilic and Reaper in defensive areas. Perhaps that's an indication of the game plan for tonight's match. Austin with the attempted back pass has conceded a corner here to West Ham. And now Bilic and Reaper have trotted forward. And only Steve Potts has been left back for West Ham, and he's inside the centre circle. Williamson's corner. Dix! Point-blank range, and it's knocked in by Donny! First appearance in the starting lineup, and Donny, the Portuguese player, has set the West Ham fans off in jubilation. Well, it's very slack marking here from Spurs. Dix is allowed to get the volley in. It's a good save from Walker. But good fortune favours West Ham because the ball rebounds to the head of Dani. And he makes no mistake. What an introduction to English football. What an introduction indeed. The other player who was going for that ball was Billich, but it was Donny who got there. Much that you may have read about Donny in the build-up to his arrival with West Ham has been about him being a, a pin-up and popular for his looks, but if he continues to score goals that can lift West Ham at the table, he'll be popular for all the right footballing reasons too. Popular too with everyone at West Ham, except maybe Tony Cotty, who's isolated on the bench because of Dani's arrival. Wilson gets it clear. Sheringham appeals, but the free kick has been given to West Ham. Well, it's a real surprise to everyone, isn't it? West Ham taking the lead. When we saw the lineups, there was definitely a little bit of caution in Harry Redknapp's lineup, but they surprised everybody by taking the lead. Barry looking to get on the end of Potts free kick. This is Bishop, firmly driven at Walker. Walker holding Bishop's drive when he'd failed to hold Dick's effort earlier, which led to Danny's goal. Really was a big question mark about Ian Walker's fitness in the build-up to this game. The last match he missed was the one against West Ham last season when Spurs beat them 3-1 here. But just as they were in the fixture at Upton Park earlier in the season, Tottenham asked to come from a goal down. And West Ham really buzzing now. This is Dowie. Darney has left it. Hughes. Ian Bishop. Williamson's pull to his right. Here's Williamson. Campbell's clearance, not the best. Straight to Steve Potts. Williamson into Dowie. Potts has stayed in the opposing penalty area, but nothing was to fall for him. Well, the Spurs defence have looked so confident in recent games, look a little bit panicky. It's really shaken them this early lead from West Ham. I don't think you can attach any blame to Walker. In fact, the volley from Dix, I think it may have took a slight deflection from a Spurs player. He did well to save it, but the rebound fell nicely to that man, Darney, and he made no mistake with it. And in the calling Premiership fixture at the moment, it's West Ham in the lower half of the table who are leading at Tottenham to start the day fifth. Through this man, Dani. And it's worth testing the goalkeeper from that range, perhaps with a greasy ball. Once again, he wasn't picked up, found himself in a lot of space. Drives at the Spurs defence onto his left foot, not afraid to shoot. Well held from Walker. But they can't get near to him in that area. It really is a problem for Spurs. Here's Dazel, fouled by Dani. One surprising admission, perhaps, of a fit right-sided player, John Hart, but he is available on the bench should they decide to switch things, West Ham. 
Parks just back from international duty with the United States. It's Raul Fox with the free kick, and it's Sheringham going in. And was there a push there by Village on Sheringham? That's what they were appealing for, but referee wasn't very impressed by the appeals. And a chance here for Sheringham. Good save by McCloskey. Armstrong looks to follow it up, and Reaper turns it away. But McCloskey there comes to West Ham's rescue in the opening minute of the second half to deny Sheringham. Well, it's a great chance for Sheringham. I think he needed to do a no wheel in there. We've seen it a couple of times recently where he just chips it over the advancing keeper, but McCloskey smothered it well. I'm grateful for the goalkeeper's length of leg there. Holderwood's won the corner. An encouraging start to the second half for Tottenham, but McCloskey holding firm. Heavy oh. pushing going on. And that's been penalised. Armstrong bursting clear and Fox is in the box, so too now is Dazel. Something's won the throw. And it's Clive Wilson to take it. Wilson's cross. And the header away to Armstrong, saved again by McCloskey, and it's gone for the corner. And again, it's the goalkeeper's legs. Good deep cross on Wilson. Falls to Armstrong, and once again, another excellent save from McCloskey, this time his left foot. There's Sheringham again. Andy Sinton. Taking on Potts and getting in the cross. Dazel goes for it, Armstrong. Dazelle again, he turns and gets the shot in, he screens the ball well and still manages somehow to squeeze his efforts in. We saw him score a goal against Queen's Park Rangers like that earlier in the season. Once again, another brilliant cross from Sinton. Armstrong pulls off in a similar position at the back post, into Dazelle, he's looking for a little overhead kick, not enough power, easy save from the Costco. Chance here for Cotty. How did he miss? This time Hughes plays the reverse ball through to Cotty. And it's still Cotty. It's a good run and a good try. Excellent play from Hughes to Cotty. He feels he's going to try and get onto his right foot, but he comes inside past Calderwood. Little left footer inches past the post. Great effort there from Cotty. Williamson with the corner. Dowie, Cotty, great save, Dowie! Never looked like turning the rebound in the way he shaped up for that, but a magnificent save from Walker to stop Cotty extending the lead. Great save from Walker and a bad miss from Dowie. It's a great overhead kick from Cotty, good save, but Dowie really should have scored, should have got his foot around it more, doesn't wrap it around it enough. Well, Ian Walker, a big doubt for this game, but he's proved his worth, particularly if Tottenham get an equaliser. 
They won't do it like that, though. They're inviting West Ham back onto them. Here's Cotty, fed by Hughes. Dowie's in the middle. Here's Dowie! And he almost atoned for the miss, but it skims just wide. Brilliant play again from West Ham. Delightful ball to Dowie. So unlucky. Harry can't believe it. He knows that West Ham had the chances to finish this game off. And now he's got to sweat through a very tough last six or seven minutes. But you have to give credit tonight, especially to the center, central two, Bilic and Reaper, they've done an excellent job. Sheringham looking to feed Armstrong this time. It's McCloskey's alertness that comes to West Ham's rescue, and now Reaper with a solid clearance. Still the pressure's maintained, Sinton's cross. And the header is just wide. Teddy Sheringham. What a great header this from Sheringham. So unlucky, beat sticks, beats McCloskey, inches wide. Sheringham forced his way through the crowd. It's not going to be his night, is it? And a hefty clearance, Cotty to Dowie! Oh, it's gone wide again! Talk about route one from one goal to the other. I've never seen so many near misses as we've had in the last ten minutes. Another unbelievable attempt from Dowie. How close can you get? It's going from one end to the next. <laughs> the next Premiership challenge was at Stamford Bridge, a date for Julian Dix to rub out the bad memories of his previous showdown with the Blues. Dix was outstanding as the Hammers stage a stirring fight back. Kareen's clearance. It's good head on Furlong. Peacock could get on the end of this. He's beaten Reaper. And Chelsea ahead. It was a brilliant move, came straight from the keeper. Kareen's clearance, flicked through for Furlong and didn't Peacock do well. 1-0 Chelsea. Rolling slow. Good return from Hughes. West Ham mounting an attack. Looking to uh, find the equaliser. Rollins a good cross. Up goes Dowie. Kareen, a great save, double save. It was a beautiful cross from Rowland, got away from the keeper. Dowie got up superbly. And Kareem not only making the first save, but palming it away as Dowie closed in. That's just out there, Sinclair. And again on this left flank from uh, where West Ham have been making most of their attacks. Dix getting the boost. It would be lovely if he could uh, silence those today. Hughes, it's a dipping cross. Dowie's on the end of it. And he got away from Kareem, but uh, the ball always curling away from him. And Dowie meant it first, but couldn't quite squeeze it in. Chelsea, Hullet, uh, a challenge with Danny. Hullet comes off best. It's a good ball to Peacock. Scorer of the first goal. And now Dennis Wise is through. Dick's closing down on him. McCloskey. And Dick screaming at... Uh, the linesman, he felt Wise was offside as he moved through there, but a great save, McCloskey. And now Danny takes this corner for West Ham. They're piling up the attackers. Julian Dix has moved up, Reaper's moved up. This one will fall for Dix. And he silenced the Chelsea critics. Julian Dix. Chelsea won, West Ham won. And there, Beauty and the Beast. It was a superb corner, Danny did it, and up went Dix with a powerful header, Kareem no chance. Williamson's corner, up went Hawks, an appeal for hands, and uh, Peacock uh, gets it away. Roland will take the throw, West Ham looking for a second, in control, Roland gets it from Hughes. 
Delicate teasing cross, Reaper's head down, Williamson! Danny Williamson's third goal of the season, and West Ham are ahead! Just minutes after Dix has equalised. Williamson takes the salute. But a superb cross, another one from Roland. He's been pulling him out all day. And Williamson, look at this for a finish. Chelsea one, West Ham two. Confidence was sky high. The Hammers certainly fancied their chances against Hotshots Newcastle. The Upton Park faithful were in for a real treat. Dowie. Bishop. That's nicely played for Williamson. Barton's lost him momentarily, and Williamson has found the net. A young East Ender in tip-top form, Danny Williamson, gives West Ham United the lead after seven minutes. He only lives five minutes away from this ground. He's West Ham through and through, and put through. He got away from Barton, and he's angled shot. Beat Pavel Cernicek. Dowie. Into the path of Dix, rampaging forward. Header away by Albert. Bishop, though, for West Ham. Oh, he's come for glory, and Cernicek was almost caught out. Looked to all the world as if Bishop was going to hang up a high cross for Ian Dowie. But instead he hit a wicked curling shot, which bounced just wide of uh, Pavel Cernicek's left-hand post. He wouldn't have got back. for Beardsley and now Spria oh hit the post and falls kindly back into the hands of Ludo Miklosko and Faustino Aspria denied his first goal in English football by the woodwork played in by Peter Beardsley wrong-footed Reaper curled the shot but not quite enough Miklosko was helpless stood and watched and waited it for, waited for it to return to him way by Dix Potty in pursuit. It's all alone for the moment, although Williamson has sneaked up in space to his right, if you can see him. Rather belatedly, but it's a good ball from Cotty, and here is Williamson. Oh, just wide. Oh, he tiptoed into so much space. And Tony Cotty just take, took a moment to spot him, but when he did, the pass was good, and so was the chance. Bishop. Here's Williamson again. Albert's challenge was fair. Here goes Ferdinand. Oh, I didn't miss by much. When it left its foot, it looked bound for the corner of the goal. But Les Ferdinand's shot just curled away the wrong side. It might even have brushed as if it went past. Hughes for West Ham. Good run by Michael Hughes. Well picked out too by Keith Rowland. And well tracked by Lee Clark. Corner kick. Newcastle's lead has been a pretty constant nine points for more than a month now. West Ham United doing their level best at Upton Park tonight to extend their fine record and open the door for one or two of the championship challenges to maybe make progress. The last eight minutes. Williamson will take the corner. Dix is there, and is there, and West Ham United are two up. On course for their fifth straight Premiership win, and on course to blow the Championship race open again. 
look at the space that Julian Dix had here. Able just to knock it down. Colley knocked it over his shoulder. Cernicek couldn't keep it out. And Newcastle United are facing their first Premiership defeat of 1996. Dix. Potty is one-on-one uh, -on -one with Howie. And the cavalry's arriving. This is Williamson. And now Dowie. Oh! Well, he smashed it, didn't he? From a difficult angle. All the scored a spectacular third for West Ham. Newcastle have just about everybody bar Cernicek in there. Barton takes. Headed by Reaper. Back in by Clark. Away by Dix. Manful defending again from West Ham United. And the chance to break again. Here goes Ian Bishop. Gordon is clear to his right. Bishop has played Gordon in. Chance to wrap it up with a third. Saved by the feet of Cernicek. Newcastle wholly committed to trying to save the game. Almost exposed to a third goal from Dale Gordon. In three short weeks, the Hammers has staged a remarkable transformation. Five wins out of five against top-notch opposition. Harry's heroes have done the Hammers proud. For the full story of the 95-96 campaign, look out for the official review at the end of the season. Oh, <laughs> oh,